as the leaves fall from the trees and the temperatures begin to drop, there's one method and one species that lots of people think about, that's drop shot fishing for perch. Most people have got a canal near them and they're absolutely full of perch. This can be fun fishing at its best and today I've got some great new tackle and lures to show you, so let's make a start. Perch are quite a predictable creature and if you're walking along a canal looking for features, the perch tends to be in the areas where there's cover. So if you've got a boat, an overhanging tree, a bridge, a lock cutting, that's where the perch will tend to be. As well as that, they tend to feed at particular times of day, that being first thing in the morning and last thing in the afternoon, when they've got the best chance of a successful hunt. Perch are also very inquisitive. Very often, if you get near where they're actually holding up, and flick your lure in there, very often you'll see them shoot across and intercept it before it even hits the bottom. So don't worry about gentle casts and things like that. Sometimes the best thing that you can do is actually make sure that it goes in with a good plop or a splash because to a perch that means that there's food about. Any kind of disturbance or movement triggers them to come in and have a look. So if you get your location 75% right, the perch will generally do the rest for you. I've had a couple casts in this particular spot and whilst I've seen a few fish moving around, we haven't had any real interest. Now, just upstream from here, there's a bridge and a lock, which are really, really good places to target. So I think with that in mind, we'll go and give it a try. Whilst bridges and boats are great features, if my life depended upon catching a perch, this is exactly the type of swim that I'd head to. If you look just over my shoulder here, we've got a bridge. Now that offers plenty of cover and shade for predators. Just upstream, we've got a lock cutting. There's lots going on here. We've got lots of movement in the water as the water's pumped through. There's food coming through that attracts both prey fish and perch. And we've got the gates themselves. We've got ladders going in. Lots and lots of structure where perch can hide away, ready to ambush. This looks an absolutely brilliant feature to me. I'm going to get down there and make a start. Within the lock cuttings themselves, I've got some favoured areas to target. And my most productive area within lock cuttings has to be the open gates themselves. If you actually look, they've got these horizontal wooden bars that run down and they go all the way to the base. Now that type of structure is perfect for perch to hide away can actually see they're nice and shaded there and the perch will sit in under there waiting for anything to swim past and come out and grab it. Hopefully today they'll see my lure going past and attempt them out. Now the way that I'm actually fishing this lure is quite particular. Now what I'm doing, once the lure's actually hit the bottom, I'm starting off with just little shakes of the rod tip. I'm not actually moving the weight, the weight's staying static on the bottom, although as it tilts back and forth it'll be puffing up the silt or if it's on a hard bottom, it'll be making noise, all of which attracts perch. So we're just keeping it in one place. And that's something that you can do with drop shot that you can't do with any other style of lure. So it's just little shakes of the rod tip. We're not feathering for mackerel, we're not pulling it up and down like so. It's just keeping a tiny little bit of slack there in the braid and using that to lift and drop the lure. Don't do it in too uniform a manner, just put little twitches and drops and if you have a look at it in clear water, you can actually see what the lure is doing. And when you find retrieves that are working for you, just keep using them. If it's caught one fish, it will catch another. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is that occasionally I'll just turn the handle and that will just bring the weight along the bottom. It will keep the lure just a foot or so above, in this case, right in the eye line of any perch or where I expect them to be. So as I've moved the weight forward, I start that process again. So it's little twitches and then letting it fall slack. And you'll see I always keep that little bit of slack in the braid. Now one thing that you'll probably notice is that I'm using a very, very bright braided line. Now the reason that I do that is I rely upon the visibility for bite indication. Yes, some bites you'll feel a good solid pull or a tap as the fish takes it, but a lot of the time with a static lure, all you'll get is a little knock or a tightening. And that can be really hard to pick up um, if you're only using a black braid or actually feeling it through the line itself. So by using a bright yellow braid, very often I'll just see it pull up or drop slack as a fish takes it 
and that's that tells me that there's a fish there and I strike and I catch a lot of bonus fish using that additional form of bite indication. We're going to have a look at the tackle that I use for my drop shot fishing. Firstly, the rod and reel. Now, for canal drop shot fishing, my preferred rod is the Jig and Spin Super Finesse. Now, this is a 7 foot 6 rod that casts from 1 to 8 grams. So you may ask why I'm choosing that particular model. Firstly, it's got a very, very sensitive tip, and that transmits any bites through the white tip so I can see what's going on as well as feeling it through the rod. However, further down the rod, there's plenty of power through the middle and into the butt section. And if you do hook a bigger fish, it allows you to quickly get the upper hand and land it. Now, it's a very, very lightweight rod, so it'd be silly to put a great big reel on there. And for that reason, I'm using a tiny little Ultron 1500. Now, this takes plenty of braid. Line capacity isn't an issue. We're probably never going to be casting more than 20 yards on these types of waters. But it's smooth and it's got a lovely smooth drag as well, which makes it great for playing fish. You'll notice I've got the yellow jig silk on there. And the reason that I use a braided line for all of my lure fishing is that it's got absolutely no stretch. And that means that every little movement as the lure goes across the bottom, across the weed, or hopefully into a fish's mouth, is transmitted up the braid and I can feel what's going on. And that's really, really important. The yellow braid as well is great for bite indication because not only can you feel what's going on with braid, with the yellow braid or any bright color braid, you can see what's going on as well. So those little twitches and pulls that you might otherwise miss, you can see them. Moving on from the rod and reel, got to think about fish care as well. So we've got our lander net and that's got a coated mesh and that's really, really important because it means the hook and the drop shot weights and any other tackle involved won't get tangled up. As well as that, on the actual lander net pole itself, I've just slid down a small specialist unhooking mat. And that means that if we do get a bigger fish, we can put the mat out and lay it out on there. Most of the time, with smaller fish, I'm just putting them down on a soft surface. You can see plenty of grass here. Obviously, the fish safety comes first, so never put them down on the towpath or anything else. Now, we don't actually take that much terminal tackle with us, but everything that we do take, I just use one of these shoulder bags, single strap, absolutely perfect for carrying everything that you need. If you're taking more than that with your drop shot fishing, you're taking too much gear. I thought that lock cutting was going to be an absolute dead cert. However, the perch weren't at home at the moment. I think it could be due to the light levels and the perch could be hiding away looking for lots of shade. Now if you're looking for shade, look behind me, we've got two boats parked up there. Absolutely brilliant feature and I think it could be just the place to get us off the mark with a good perch. The water's really, really clear today, and I think that's putting the perch off a little bit. I've just tried, along the side of this boat here, a feature that's bound to hold some perch. Retrieve the lure about a metre, a metre and a half away from the hull, no interest whatsoever. This time, I'm actually going to try up the inside between the bank and the boat. Now, whenever you do this, yes, it's a great feature, but you need to be aware that that can be someone's home as well. So always be careful not to hit the boat or damage the paintwork. So just a little flick right in under there and we'll see if anyone's at home. I've gone all the way up now, managed to get a, a bit of a lucky cast right up the inside between the bank and the boat. Typically, just as the weather changes, but sometimes a change in the light levels can really switch them on. Just coming back, just along the side of the boat there now, and that is right in the killing zone now. That's where you'd expect them to come from. Little twitches, little, t that's a bite. Trying to get underneath the boat. Oh, there we go. So keep the rod nice and low when you're playing them from under a boat because you don't want your line going across the, the hull of the boat and damaging your line. There we go. Little hot olive micro fry. And we've got a perch in the net. As you can probably see, there's a big change in the weather. We've gone from what's been a bright, sunny morning to an overcast and slightly damp afternoon. You might have noticed as well that as the light levels changed, that's when the bite came, and that's a great indicator that the perch could be coming on the feed. 
perch are very rarely on their own. They're not solitary predators. They're usually in small groups. So with that in mind, I'm really keen to get this lure back into position where the last bite came from and see if there's any more knocking around. It's about as far underneath as, uh, as I can get it. So if there's anything under there, it's certainly gonna have good visibility over that lure. And that's pretty much in the same spot where I had the last take. There we go. That feels like it could be a slightly better fish. Again, just keep the rod low, get it out from underneath the boat first. See it in the clear water there. It's not, a, it's not huge, it's a nice fish. It's certainly a little bit bigger than the last. Let's guide it into the net there. Same lovely colours as the fish before. And that just goes to show that when you've landed one, it always pays to get the lure straight back in to the same area, keep it consistent, and you get multiple captures really, really quick. Stunning little perch, good hook hold in the top lip there. We'll just carefully pop that one out. Just hold that one up and admire it. Again, absolutely stunning markings, these clear water perch. And there's fish like this, and of course a lot bigger, in probably every canal in the country. And I bet there's a canal near you with fish like this that you can go and target. And these places are very often free or dead cheap as well. So really good, cheap, accessible fishing. Let's have a look at the business end of drop shot fishing. I've got the rig here, and the first thing that you'll probably notice is it's pretty damn simple. There's not actually a lot going on there. We'll start on the end of the line. We've got one of our drop shot weights. In this case, this is a five gram weight, and the reason I've chosen five gram is I roughly go for one gram for every foot of water that I'm fishing in. Now you'll notice if you look at the top of the weight there, it's got a tapered swivel eye. And that means that you can just pull the line down and actually adjust the distance between the lure and the weight. And that means you can try different parts of the water column to see where the fish are at that time. Moving up from there, we've got our hook. And that's the size four drop shot hook, which is tied into the line. So there's no hook link or anything else like that. And that means that all the movement that we put actually into it is transmitted directly into the lure, which would be absorbed if we had it on any kind of hook link. And nipped onto that little size four drop shot hook. In this case, we've got one of the hot olive microfry. And as you can see, just literally hook it on very, very lightly, almost like a lip hooked bait. And that means that you get a great amount of movement. Now, once that weight hits the bottom, those little lifts and drops will mean that the lure goes up and down like so, whilst the weight actually stays in place. And that's the great advantage of this rig over any other lure fishing presentation, that you can actually keep it right in that strike zone, whether it's in a particular spot or a particular distance off the bottom where you suspect the fish to be. So for those of you that haven't seen it before, that's a basic drop shot rig. That's all it takes. That's all you need to get out there and catch a few fish. If you haven't tried drop shot fishing before and the thought of tying the rigs up seems a little bit too much, we've got some new drop shot ready rigs. On here we've got three ready tied rigs and they're all tied actually using the components within the drop shot range. So it's top quality com components, eight pound illusion and 10 pound illusion, brass weights, same as within the main range and also the size four and size two drop shot weights. So these are purpose designed for UK venues. And as you can see, it comes on a foam dispenser there, which means the rigs are easily taken off, tied on, and you can even put them back on there at the end of the session for next time you're out. So that's absolutely perfect for getting you out there and catching a few. Now taking that concept one stage further, we've also got the Fish Snacks Drop Shot Ready Rig Kit. Again, you've got your three ready-made rigs, and as well as that, we've got some hand-chosen lures that are absolutely perfect for the type of conditions that you're likely to come across on UK venues. So in there, you've got everything that you need to get out there. It's nothing more complicated than tying one of these rigs on the end, popping one of those lures on there, and catching a few fish. You'll notice there that one of the weights and rigs in that pack's missing. The reason for that is these rigs are absolutely perfect. They're as good as anything I can tie, so I've already got that one set up on my outfit. 
As with any type of fishing, what bait you put on the hook is absolutely vital to success. And I'm going to show you three great new lures that have been producing lots and lots of fish. Firstly, we've got the new Microfry. It's four centimetres. It's got a nice fat bait fish shaped body. And as you can see, just catching the wind there, it's got a great big paddle tail on the back that gives loads of movement. And that's absolutely perfect for when predators are really, really active and on the feed. If you want something a little bit bigger, we've got the five centimetre Tiddler Fast. The difference with this, it's got a slimmer body and also a smaller paddle tail, which as you can see, it's still moving in the wind here, but you don't get quite as much movement, which as water temperatures drop and fish aren't feeding as hard, is a really, really good edge. As well as that, it's got an insert inside, which is a shiny fabric, which gives lots and lots of extra flash. Last, but by no means least, we've got the Tiddler Slow. And on those cold, hard days, when it's hard to get a bite on anything, this is the one to go for. As you can see, this doesn't have a paddle tail on the back. It's just got what we call a pin tail. So the lure just tapers away, and you can see it just quivers. So those little movements that you put into it, you just get these tiny little movements, but on a difficult day, that's more than enough to get a trigger. Use those three lures, and you won't go too far wrong with your drop shot fishing this winter. We've had a look at the basic tackle you need to try drop shot fishing. What I'm going to do now is take off this hot olive microfry, and I've got a lemon tiger tiddler fast. The reason for the change the light level's dropping away a bit and I think this will be absolutely perfect. Just behind me here, I've got a lot cutting and we've already proved today they very often hold perch. So let's go over and try this one out. Right at the back end of the day now, the light's going and this is prime time. I've dropped right into one of the locks here, put on something a little bit brighter with a bit of glitter in there, try and get a bit of extra flash. And it's around this time we can often pick a fish or two up. There we go. That's a bite, and it's a perch. Going to have uh, some fun and games landing it from up here, but we'll give it a go. Let's bring it up here onto the the soft ground. And that is absolutely lovely colours. Stunning fish, just check that one out. Lovely fish. We're just going to show how good the end of the day can be. We're in again. Feels like it could be a slightly better fish as well. Well, to pull him round quite hard there. I can give a little bit of line. Could be a pike. If it's not a pike, it's a much better perch. We'll soon see. And when the water's clear like this, I often make slightly longer casts so I'm not putting my shadow over the water. And this time I've made a cast a little bit longer, back down into the lock. Trying to search out some new water, and we've got another fish. And this feels like it could be a perch from the way the uh, from the way it's shaking its head. Hopefully, it is. If it is, it'll be a slightly better one. Yeah, that's a perch. Great result. And that just goes to show why it's always worth staying right on till the end of the day when you're fishing for perch. The hook's dropped out in the net there, and at a time when many people be loading their gear into the back of the car, or maybe even on their way home, but hanging on for last knock-ins, it's really paid off with it's definitely our best fish of the day.